Hello and welcome to this first exercise in module 14. Uh, here, these videos, uh, I'm going to break each one of these problems up into a, a few different videos, I think. Uh, we're going to do, uh, I think, pretty well every type of question or every type of calculation that you might have to do for a simple linear regression problem. As you can see in the, the first problem here in part A, it just says fill in the blanks in the table below. Well, this table below is pretty well all blanks. <laughs> There's very little information here provided. So this is going to give us practice in calculating pretty well every part uh, of a simple linear regression. Uh, but even more than that is that it forces us to, uh, to, to gain some understanding as to how each of these parts of the larger puzzle are related. So we can look at, a, at this table and, and the other problems, the, the pr information that's provided is a little bit different. And you have to understand, okay, based on what's here, what can I figure out from, from what is here? Where can we go next? And then that leads to the next thing and the next thing. So in this exercise, we look at this table. This is a Microsoft Excel output. What can we do? Well, for this first part of the video, I'm going to focus just on calculating the, the coefficients. There isn't enough information provided in the table to obtain these coefficients, so we're going to have to do this the long way. We're going to have to do this from the data itself. So if we go back up to the problem, and uh, let's uh, let's see what we have to work with here. So here we're looking at a we have a strong belief that student performance is directly related, directly linked to the amount of time uh, the student spends studying. And so here we have some of this data available. So what we have is a regression model that states that a student's grade is, in this case, we're assuming a linear relationship with the number of hours of studying. Now I say linear relationship, we'll get into nonlinear stuff uh, probably a much later date. Uh, so here we have a linear relationship. It's not a perfect relationship. There's some random fluctuation in there. In other words, what that means is that, you know, somebody who studies five hours a week, they don't get exactly 70%. Or somebody who studies six hours a week doesn't get exactly 75%. What we can do is, is determine an average. So if we say, well, the average, the expected value of y is a linear function of x. So now we can say, okay, if you study five hours a week, you know, students who study five hours a week, on average, they get a grade of 60%. Or somebody who studies 10 hours a week, on average, they get a grade of 80%. So we can estimate the average values, not the exact values, because it's not going to be exactly the same. So what we're going to do, this is what we're going to estimate. So what we need to do is calculate our two sample parameters that we are then going to use as estimates uh, of those population coefficients. So the formulas that we're going to need, I'll write these out over here. For the slope coefficient, this is the covariance between x and y, uh, y and y bar. Oops, that's not squared, my mistake. So this is the covariance between x and y divided by the variance in x. And then once we have that, we can obtain the y-intercept, which is a function of the slope. So these are, of course, the formulas that are a result of the ordinary least squares, or the least squares criterion, it's called. And this is that minimization problem. We minimize the sum of squared errors. And so here, and we're not going to actually do this, but here, if we have, here's our predicted, or sorry, here's our observed values, minus, if we substitute this in, b0, b1, x, all of that squared. And we take some, some derivatives and do some calculus and solve for b0 and b1. And these are the formulas that we would obtain. Now, I don't ever force my students to go through all of that. Calculus isn't a required part of the course. So we'll just jump straight to the formulas. Uh, needless to say, what we're doing here, these formulas are the result of minimizing our error and therefore maximizing uh, our predictive strength. 
uh, or maximizing our ability to explain or capture the variation in our dependent variable. So I'm going to clear some space and we'll go through these calculations. Uh, and I'm actually going to go through them. Uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit. You'll see what I mean. I'll go through a little bit faster than normal. So what I like to do, calculate each of the parts of this formula uh, separately. So we're going to need those differences between x and x bar. We'll need the differences between y and y bar. Then we need the product of those, x bar, y, i, y bar. And then we need the first column are those differences between x and x bar squared. So in my data set here, remember grade was our dependent variable. It's dependent on the number of hours that we spend studying. So we'll calculate the differences along our, our independent variable. Then, so that'll be one, then along our dependent variable. And then here we'll calculate that covariance. And then when we add all of these values up, so we'll add up down this column, and here we'll have the numerator for this formula. And then over here, we'll add up along our values there. And this, let's call this our pink. So then when we add all those up, that will give us our denominator for that, uh, for that formula. So here's what we're going to do. Now, I don't know if you've watched many of my other videos. I've often been using this calculator and I've decided that I really hate this calculator <laughs> because I, it, it causes me so many silly little mistakes. So I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to use the calculator. I'm going to assume that you guys are okay calculating uh, these differences uh, without me showing you exactly all of them. So what I'm going to do for, for column A, we're working with our independent variable. So the first piece is 2.2 minus 4. So this is where I'm going to cheat. I've already got the answers written on my screen right in front of me. So 2.2 minus 4, I get negative 1.8. And then as we go down each of these, 3.9 minus 4, this is minus 0 0.1. 5.3, this is 1.3. Sorry, uh, yeah, 3.7, negative 0.3 and 5.1 minus 4 gives me 1.1. So there are all of the differences between my observed uh, independent values and the mean uh, x bar. Then we do the same thing for y. So now I'll go through, uh, I'll change my color here. We'll go through each of these values. So this first one is 24, what happened there is messy. 24 minus 52.8. So this is minus 28.8. The next 36 minus 52.8 is minus 16.8. And then 68, so that's 15.2. 55, always that same mean, 2.2. And 81 minus 52.8 is 28.2. Okay, now we've got two parts of our puzzle. Column three, now we just need to multiply those together. So this will be 1.8 minus 28.8. This will give us 53.0. Might be some rounding error in here. I'm just gonna keep everything to one decimal place. We don't have to be exceedingly precise. Just keep it simple. Uh, this one, minus 0.1 times minus 16.8. This will be 2.4. The next one, 19 point, oops, 19.2, uh, minus 0.3 times 2.2, minus 0.7, and the last one, minus 29.9. So here, I'm just multiplying all of these things together, okay? And then if we add up down this column, all of our pink values, that gives us 103.6. So there's our numerator. So this is 103.6. Now for the denominator, we need to calculate this first column and then we're gonna square it. So we're starting here, 1.8 squared. This will give us 3.4, negative 0.1 here. If we keep this to one decimal place, this will just be zero. That's fine, there's a little bit of rounding error there. 1.3, this will give us 1.6 negative 0.3, this will give us 0 0.1, 
and 1.1, this will just give us 1.1 again. And now we add up down this column here, and I have 6.2. So there's my denominator, 6.2. And so finally, 1.3 divided by 6.2 equals, that will give us our uh, slope of 16.6. .6. So I can come down into our table, and here I have our first value, 16.6. .6. Now we can come back up, and we want to calculate the y-intercept for our estimated equation. y-bar, I have y-bar is right here, 52.8 minus that slope that we just calculated, 16.6, .6, times x bar is 4, and this is equal to minus 14.4. Okay, now I can enter this down here, minus 14.4. So now we've got really the key result of a regression analysis. We have now our estimated regression equation, minus 14.4 plus 16.6x. So that's it, that's what we are going for. Now I have that relationship, that point estimate of the relationship between the number of hours spent studying and a point estimate for the average grade given a certain number of hours spent studying. So this is our key result. Now, the next step is going to be doing some hypothesis testing to determine specifically, we'll do it on both B0 and B1, but more interesting is the hypothesis test on B1 because we want to identify or determine is that value statistically different from zero? In other words, is the number of hours spent studying a valid predictor of a student's grade in this, uh, in this course? So I'm about 12 minutes into this video, so I think we'll end it there. Uh, and then we'll start up another video to go through the hypothesis testing and some of the ANOVA stuff. Uh, so I'll call, it, uh, I'll call it quits now. We've got a good start. We've got our key result. I'll start up another video and we go through some of the testing. Okay, thank you for watching.